the tenth men in a minyan. Many minyanim have exactly enough people to form a minyan. Ten men. Sometimes, if a person doesn't come, the minyan breaks down. A minyan which relies on such ten men, and one agrees to attend one of those minyanim, may back out of it if it becomes inconvenient for him to go. Anyone who had tried to arrange a temporary minyan understands the difficulties that face the organizer. One quickly learns that it is necessary to secure a pledge of attendance from more than the minimum 10 men necessary. Either that, or face almost certain delay and ultimately the dissolution of the minyan. If one said that he'll come to the minyan, he committed. What is the obligation of one who commits to join such a minyan? The Bet Yosef quotes Hagot Maimoni, who discusses the case of town with only 10 men living there. With Rosh Hashanah approaching, one of the men wishes to travel to a different town for the upcoming Yom Tov season. The God Maimoni ruled that the town may force the man to stay unless he hires someone else to take his place in the Minyan. Shuchan Aruch adds that a town with 11 men living in it does not have this restric- restriction. Any single one may travel and we are not concerned that one of the remaining ten will be unable to make it to the Minyan. This is also the ruling of the Kafachaim. This is brought down in Orachaim Sofsiman Nunhei. The ruling of the Shulchan Aruch appears to be very strange, very odd. After all, how can you be so certain that nothing will happen to jeopardize the Minyan at the last minute? If there's exactly ten men, what are the odds that all will make it to the prayer for every tefillah. Rather, it seems that if one knows the entire minyan rides on their shoulder and without them, the other nine men would have to forgo the tefillah with a minyan, there is no chance that they would miss the tefillah. When a minyan relies on one man, it is such a great responsibility that one would apply the utmost effort to avoid ruining the minyan. This is why the Kafachaim and Shulchan Aruch allowed the 11th men to live without securing a replacement, because there is no chance that any of the 10 men remaining would miss the tefillah. This would also explain the Shulchan Aruch's ruling, breaking a minyan is such a serious matter that one is required to pay for replacement if he would break the minyan by leaving town. Indeed, the Raman notes, that Shulchan Aruch's ruling applies not only for the days of awe, but rather all year. He states, regarding any place which does not always have ten in the shul, people may be compelled with fines to ensure that they will always come to pray so that the minyan will never be forced to close. The Mishnah Bura writes, when there happened to be no minyan in a town one day, it is permitted to force those that are learning in yeshiva to stop learning and join the minyan. At that moment, keeping the minyan functional is considered more important than their learning. But Moshe Feinstein was asked regarding a shul that was missing a minyan only during the week. Although there were many who considered themselves members of the shul, they did not want to pray there during the week because the timing of the minyan was not to their liking. However, as a result, there was often no minyan in the shul, and many were forced to pray without a minyan at times. Of Moshe responded by quoting the above Ramah, and concluded that it is the community's responsibility that the shul have ten men for the minyan every day. Shevet Alevi as well at such things, and says, It is true, even when the yeshiva has a minyan of its own, the student must leave in order to join and complete a minyan for the town's prayer. True, the students will definitely go to a quicker, less intense tefillah than what they are accustomed to, but it is more important that they help complete the felling minyan. With all this in mind, it is clear that one who has committed to being the tenth man at a local minyan, when only ten men can join in the first place, may not skip a day.